All right. Hello. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Uh, how are y'all doing? Good. Welcome to the FWA 2020 Intro to uh, DIY Electronics and Electrical Engineering Panel. All right. Um, we're gonna be quick quick about this though. So I'm gonna call out your name. If you signed up on the Google form and you are here right now, you will get one of these. I only have 20 of them, okay? If you did not, even if you signed up and you didn't get one, uh, I'll still be emailing these all out to each other. So y'all get the schematics, the slides, the video, the firmware, all the et cetera stuff. So, okay. Um, these will fit on your lanyards. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so let's be quick, let's be swift. Yeah, welcome to the panel. Uh, this is going to be my attempt to nerd snipe you on electronics because I love electronics. I have no bias whatsoever. I have no bias whatsoever. You don't have a protogen head, that'd be the, that'd be the final A lot step. of folks have said that. I have no bias whatsoever. Um, okay, yeah. OBS, we still good? We're still good. All right. I'm Lorne, or Nick, either or is good. Uh, electronics engineering is my day job. Uh, I design props, electronic gadgets, Neos, VR, shout out. Hardware, radios, cosplay stuff for hobby. I love felines, canines, and protogens. Unfortunately, the protogens are in their own panel across the hall right now. I'm really sad about that. Uh, right now. Um, okay, well, that'll be fixed later. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go, 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 go. Okay. Uh, Wolf with Tron lines. I love Outer Wilds, space, rockets. Sorry, the music isn't uh, uh, isn't at all Outer Wilds related. Can y'all see this? No. <laughs> Shit. Um, so, audience, uh, Wolf of Tron lines, yep, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Audience participation is encouraged. Please let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow. We're probably going to be going max speed right now. Um, I'll take questions halfway through, and at the end, or you can just ping me on Telegram or whatever. Find me. Um, yeah, you could just walk out and just take the schematic with you. I, my feelings won't be hurt. Okay. Why do you want to learn? Uh, for career, academia, hobby, or do you just want to make cool blinking lights? Let's be honest here. It's the blinking lights. Or are you just a space host or protogen looking for repairs? And again, they're right there. Okay, no matter some of your reasons, here's what you can do and build with this forbidden knowledge. Aforementioned blinking lights, uh, all the costuming bonus points for first suiting with fans, lights, moving tails, all that good jazz. Uh, build signal scopes and signal scopes and listen to the stars. Outer wilds. Um, play it. Uh, repair your own electronics. Right to repair. Yes. Fart yes. Apple. Yes. Yeah. Uh, literally anything though. The sky's the limit. E.g., any project on Hackaday or Adafruit. Do whatever. Okay, where the hell do I start? Uh, well, you could learn from school. I went to school. Uh, you could read stuff on Wikipedia. I read stuff on Wikipedia. You could read textbooks. I read textbooks. Uh, you could read Adafruit's Hackday Spark Fun tutorials. I did that. Uh, you could do hands-on stuff. We're doing that right now. Or you could talk to engineers. Hi, I'm an engineer. <laughs> I think this panel has merit. Okay. Uh, surprise physics. Y'all will have to read this later, but it's basically what's Ohm's law, different units like current, voltage, uh, watts, coulombs, ohms, farads, henrys. Yeah. We'll get into that later. You can ask me it later, uh, or you can ask me for the slides and I'll give them to you. Uh, more physics. Uh, current flows from the highest positive voltage to the lowest negative voltage or zero volts. Current flow is opposite of electron flow. When, you, when people say current, they mean positive charge flow. This is also known as conventional current. Um, blame Ben Franklin. Um, 
the current entering a junction or a node. So if you've got two lines splitting out and one going in, the current of the sum of those two nodes going out must equal the current going in. This is Kirchhoff's current law. Uh, the directed sum of voltages in a closed loop must equal zero. So if you have a battery and it goes through the circuit, when it gets to the back of the battery, it should be zero volts. Otherwise, physics has broken down. Um, I'm going to go through a list of electronic components. Um, yes, <laughs> from the most simple to the most complex. Uh, schematic symbols are on the left side. Uh, what they physically look like is on the right side. Uh, relative important formulas are going to be on the bottom. Um, of course, y'all can get the slides later and read them detailed yourself. Um, there's two primary component packages. Either there's through-hole components, which go have their legs through the circuit board. So like the push buttons on these uh, badges, they are through-hole. Or they can be surface mount, where they mount onto the top of the board, like pretty much everything else on this board. Okay. Uh, batteries are power supplies. This is their schematic symbol. Battery. Power supply. Potato battery. It's a thing. It is a thing. Uh, resistors. They slow electrical current. They are frequency independent, meaning no matter if you're putting 60 hertz or 60 gigahertz through it, uh, <laughs> it'll still limit current frequency independent. It does not, unless you have to deal with parasitics. But we'll talk about parasitics later. Uh, capacitors, they hold charge, they store electrical potential energy, they resist changes in voltage, they are frequency dependent. So if you have 60 hertz going across it, it will be very, um, words, it'll be very resistive. If you have 60 gigahertz flowing through it, it'll be effectively very conductive because there is a frequency relationship here. This is reactance. So you can think of it as like resistance for capacitors, but it's frequency dependent. Inductors, uh, so coils, uh, they hold magnetic flux. They store potential, uh, magnetic potential energy. They generate current from magnetic fields. So think transformers, think motors, think generators. Uh, they resist changes in current uh, and they are frequency dependent. So they're like the flipped version of capacitors. So if you have 60 Hertz, 60 Hertz will flow through them really well, really easily. 60 gigahertz won't. It wants to pass DC effectively. So here's the relationship there. This is the reactance of uh, inductors. So it's like resistance for inductors, but there's complex math, actually <laughs> complex math, like the complex plane. We'll get into that later. <laughs> Diodes and LEDs, they are one-wave check valves. Um, say that 10 times fast. Uh, they pass current in only one direction. Uh, some of them emit light when ca uh, current passes through them, or vice versa, like the phototransistors on these guys. Um, some of them are designed to break down and reverse at a specific voltage, so that way they could be used for voltage regulators. If you want 5 volts, you just pass it along a zener diode and it'll try to get you 5 volts. Keyword try. Um, there's a lot of subcategories here. You could do your own uh, specialization in them. Transistors, two major types. Um, they are electronically controlled switches amplifiers. They are either current controlled, where you provide current into their base to control how much goes through them, which are bipolar or they are voltage controlled, which are field effect transistors or FETs or MOSFETs. Uh, so current doesn't actually flow into them. You just provide a static voltage to them. And depending upon that level of static voltage depends upon or controls how conductive the transistor itself is. Uh, integrated circuits, throw all of those into a blender. And by a blender, I mean little silicon dyes. And then put them in epoxy packages or just flip them straight on your board as bare silicon. Uh, you get integrated circuits. You can do a lot of complex things with them. You can make logic gates, amplifiers, clocks, memory like RAM, flash, uh, radio transmitters, voltage regulators, whole works. A lot of stuff there. Microprocessors, controllers, uh, the CPUs in your laptops and phones, programmable ICs that can do general purpose tasks. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, Arduinos have a microcontroller at their heart. There's a microcontroller in the sky. Uh, FPGAs too, but they are not sequential. You program their fabric to do stuff in parallel. Get in that. Um, basic equations. Y'all can read these at a later time. It's just the basics of Ohm's law. Uh, voltage equals current times resistance. And all the other equations, such as the capacitor equation, keyword, when I said frequency dependent earlier, note the delta t's here. Those are changes in time, which denote how much current or how much uh, voltage develops across a capacitor or an inductor, respectively. Um, passive resistor uh, or passive component combination equations. Resistors, you just add them. If they're in series, you add them together, and if they're in parallel, you add their reciprocals. Uh, capacitors, the opposite. Um, inductors is like resistors. You just add them if they're in series. If they're in parallel, you add the reciprocals. Uh, this is some more detailed equations regarding like diode, the diode equation, bipolar junction transistor equations. You can read those at another time. Okay, two common tools used. Um, probably the most two common tools. Some of them have y'all, uh, some of those are in front of you right now, those multimeters. Um, these measure AC, DC voltage, current resistance, diode voltage, capacitance, frequency, and more. Um, also soldering irons, uh, used to solder components onto the board, as they state. Um, okay. Other common EE tools, which on, um, in ex, uh, larger and larger scales of complexity and cost. Oscilloscopes, they allow you to plot signals over time. So your x-axis is time, your y-axis is voltage. Uh, function generators, uh, they can generate arbitrary signals. So if you wanted to generate 60 hertz, bam, you can generate that. If you wanted to generate a square wave, you can generate that from that. Spectrum analyzers. So if you wanted to see a waterfall display of, okay, I've got like 10 megahertz here. So think of like your radio spectra, right? If you got a um, 10 megahertz here, it'll be like, uh, or sorry, if you have a radio station here at like 98 megahertz, if you have another radio station here at 95 megahertz, they'll show up on the spectrum as these two little points. And you can actually just view what the frequency spectra looks like. Bench power supplies, power your circuit, measure the current, all that good jazz. Uh, now for the PCB in front of you. Why did I make this? I thought it would be cool. I hope you all find it cool too. <laughs> um, what's its purpose or its goal? Um, it's effectively an Arduino on a con badge with LEDs, NFC chip, magnetometer, breakouts, kind of like the DEF CON uh, Hackaday SuperCon electronic con badges and PCB art that you all may see. It's just a nice fusion of art with cool electronics. Um, so we'll break, I'll show you how we implemented this. Um, we'll break down the circuit into multiple pieces and we'll, I'll show you how it went from concept to design to implementation. So circuit part one, uh, for y'all who have the guys in front of you, go ahead and put the coin cells in them. And I'll swap over to Yeah, positive should be top. Okay. So, the um, blinker section, which... Gotta love when that happens. Whatever. Okay. The uh, blinker section of the circuit. So, when you power it up, there should be two LEDs that blink back and forth to each other. That is what's called a, a two-transistor LED multivibrator. So they just alternate back, back and forth between each other. Y'all can also shine light on them, and they'll blink faster. Um, so here's the schematic of... 
schematic excerpt of how it is. Y'all can also see it on the printouts. Um, so, if you compare the schematic to the board in front of you, you'll see that there's small little letter pairs like D4, B1, T, P10. These are known as reference designators. So if you wanted to look at a board and say, okay, where is this part on the schematic? TP10. Let's look on the schematic. Oh, there it is. You can see where it relates. Um, so test points, you can just probe them on different points of the circuit to see what's what and what the voltages are, what the currents are, all that good stuff. Um, you, if you see on your schematics as well, some of the wires have names on them. These are known as net names. So that just helps you see what part of the circuit you're looking at and just keeps things clean and more organized. Um, okay, so part two. Uh, in order for the circuit to blink, we need to generate an oscillation. Uh, this is created for this circuit created due to very tiny differences in between the individual parts themselves in order to kickstart this oscillation. Um, so R1, Q1, R16, and C4 are one side. R2, Q1, Q2, sorry, R17 and C5 are on the other side. These create little delay circuits. So they're effectively RC circuits. The uh, resistors are charging up those capacitors, but since they're limiting the current, you can actually change how long they um, charge up. This is just resistance times capacitance equals your IC time, RC time constant. So if you had a one kilo ohm resistor and a one farad, bear with me here, capacitor, it would take a thousand seconds for it to fully charge up. There's some nuance to that. Okay, so this mismatch between the two sides, one of them will charge up a little bit faster, and thus it will turn uh, the other transistor on first. So for example, if these guys charge up faster, then it will turn on this transistor first which then turns on this LED D2. D2 turns on and thus this capacitor gets discharged. So now this starts to charge up and this side turns on this transistor right here, which then turns on this LED and thus this LED is turned off. So that they just kind of swap sides effectively by one charging up and discharging the other, and then vice versa. Um, so this cycle then repeats over and over again. The frequency of oscillation is dependent upon all those values I mentioned earlier. Um, a simplified version of it, if we got rid of Q1, R16, Q2, and R17, which are responsible for the photosensitive nature of it, uh, this, it, and assuming both sides were even value-wise, the frequency relation would be 1 over 1.38 times R times C to get your, your blink frequency. Um, of course, Q1 and Q2 uh, vary this frequency and duty cycle depending upon the light level. So if you shine a little more, more light, like if you block uh, the one phototransistor on one side and shine light on the other, it'll blink um, asymmetrically. Uh, so I've tuned this circuit, and I'll explain later how, uh, via the data sheet of the photosensors to make sure that in maximum brightness and in maximum darkness, the blink frequency range is still visible. It won't blink too fast where it just looks like it's solid. It won't blink too slowly that it looks like it's dying. Um, so yeah. Okay. Uh, however, that's only half the story. We want the LEDs to properly light up with a nice controlled brightness. Uh, well, that's why we limit the current with the two 82 ohm resistors, R3 and R4. Um, but these need to be scaled correctly with the other resistors, R1, Q1, R16, R2, Q2, and R17. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. No, it's good. Okay. 
Um, so Q3 and Q4, since they are bipolar junction transistors, they are current controlled. So the amount of current that flows into them, into their bases, dictates how much current is flowing through their collectors and thus the LEDs. Uh, they have a scale factor to them known as beta or HFE. For these particular transistors, they have a scale factor of 200 approximately. So if you wanted to drive one milliamp of current through the LEDs, you would need to drive at least divided by 200 of that amount. I'm sorry, I can't do math right now. <laughs> um, so in normal room light, the phototransistor is approximately 8.3 kilo ohms. Um, doing the parallel resistor combination circuit I told or formula I showed you earlier. Uh, that combines them all together to be about 15.7 kilo ohms. So we take a three volt coin cell minus there's a small turn on voltage on these transistors, subtract that out and divide it by approximately 15 kilo ohms. That gets us 0.14 milliamps. Uh, so if we multiply that by 200, uh, the maximum LED current we can push is 29 milliamps. Of course, I limited the current so that way uh, even across battery voltage, like brand new battery or dead battery, there won't be this huge variance in LED brightness. You want it to be consistent across the battery voltage. So that's why I, li I limited it to even further than that, to about the one to five milliamp range. Um, LEDs have a voltage drop to them. Uh, looking at their data sheets, since I wanted the target for about five milliamps, uh, they have a voltage drop of about 2.5 volts um, at 5 milliamps. So take the battery voltage 3 volts, take the LED voltage drop at 2.5 volts, minus it out, divide it out by roughly 5 milliamps of the desired current. That gets us 100 milliohms, sorry, 100 ohms of resistance that we have to put here and here. Um, of course, I tweaked it a little bit more such that at in lower battery voltages, you still get a more consistent light level. So that's why it's slightly lower at 82 ohms than 100 ohms. Um, Q5 and Q6, which are at the bottom center of that schematic, are MOSFET transistors. So these allow the microcontroller or the Arduino to shut off the circuit entirely by just pulling it low whenever you want. Um, okay. Questions so far? Sorry, I've been in a rush. Okay. Just one question. So I know it's sensitive to light. Uh, is it only sensitive to visible light? It is sensitive to visible, IR, and ultraviolet. Yeah. What you can do is, if you wanted to be creative about it, is you can either get certain paints or certain filters, like photographic filters, and you can change it to be reactive to like blue light. If you get like blue colored filters or IR if you just draw Sharpie on it, because that'll block the visible, but allow the IR to pass through. Yeah. One question in regards to that. The reason why I'm doing it here is because I'm working on a fursuit. Okay. I have a mask, and it's going to have LED panels for the eyes, so I'll have to see if you can hear those and everything. Mm -hmm. It's a big project I want to work on. It. So with that understanding, that means that I can make the eyes refract into light, like you said, so that way if I'm in a dark place, it'll dim down. But if I go off and the outside, it'll brighten up, so that way people can actually see yeah. the eyes reacting like the protogens do. Yeah, totally. Kind of protogen, kind of like, protogens are cool, but don't. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't do dudgies. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but that being said, um, is this all this that we're learning to do? That can all be applied with LED panels, and also can I learn about like opening and closing mechanics and stuff? Like that? So I want to. That's a lot. I, I, I can help after panel, but that's a lot. Right, I want to talk to you after panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, any other questions so far? So all of the, uh, the diagram that we have here is everything that you use to make these uh, badges. That's part of the equation. All right. Yeah, so we'll get into that later. Um, that's the most visual part of it. The most easily explained is the schematic. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Once? Twice? Okay. Skipped. All right. There's another part of this circuit called the NFC part. Um, basically, if you have an NFC-enabled phone, go ahead and turn on NFC capability and go to the App Store and download NFC tools. It's free. I promise you, it's worth your worth your time. Um, the NFC, it is a small little memory chip that uses basically inductive coupling via coil 
on the back side of the board, which is just a coil with copper traces, such that it can communicate with your phone or any other NFC-enabled device, and you can write to it and store stuff on it, like socials, website, anything you want on it. Um, yeah, it's made, it, Amiibos use the exact same technology. Exactly. Um, kind of also like QI, wireless chargers, you put your phone on at your nightstand at night. These, these are all NFC Yep, as well. these are all NFC as well. Um, so data and power are sent over the link, and the link is bi-directional. Um, and the you could take out the coin cell on these guys on the board, and you could still read it because the NFC chip doesn't require power via a battery. It gets it harvested from the phone. Exactly. Um, so antenna one on the schematic is the copper coil on the board. Uh, C12, which you'll also see on the schematic, is not populated, and that's for tuning because NFC operates at 13.56 megahertz, so you sometimes may have to tune it because it's a, it's a tuned circuit. Um, so this year's and prior year's FWA bands include an NFC tag in them. Please don't brick them. Please don't hack them. <laughs> if I find out you do, I'm reporting you. Please don't brick them. Please don't hack them. Please don't make staff's lives any more difficult. Um, you can read them, though. That's safe. Um, so uh, I also included breakouts for this part of the circuit, which you'll note are the little header pins on the sides next to the coin cell. So you can still access um, all the other IOs on that chip. Um, so the other capacitors are used for smoothing and decoupling. Uh, so that way changes in battery voltage don't really affect the chip that much. Uh, the other part of the circuit is the magnetometer. So it's a small little black dot at the bottom center of the board. My battery died. Um, so it can sense magnetic fields, it's three axis. So it's the same magnet, it's similar to the magnetometers in your phone that you use for navigation. Um, it can sense, uh, and it can talk back to the Arduino and programmed in the demo code um, via a serial link called I squared C. The NFC also talks back to the microcontroller via this link. Um, so, disclaimer magnetometers require calibration for them to properly sense the Earth's magnetic field due to internal production biases and other small, weird physical things. Tried to rough calibrate these. They are not perfectly calibrated. I've included instructions how to calibrate them in the source code and all that jazz, but just disclaimer. Okay. Uh, the other part is the Charlie Text LEDs and the battery breakouts. So if you click through uh, with it powered on, you'll notice that there's a bunch of different LEDs at the bottom here. That's only be dri being driven by four four I.O. lines from the Ar Arduino. Uh, using a technique called Charlie Plexing, you can drive some uh, pin high, a pin low, or make it tri-state where it doesn't allow current to flow through, and you can drive many more LEDs than you can normally. So in this case, using four I.O. pins, I'm able to drive 16. Sorry. Two, four, six, eight. Twelve. I can do math. <laughs> Um, 12 LEDs. Uh, other parts of the circuit, there is Q7 on your schematic. So that's used for reverse battery protection. So if you accidentally put the coin cell in backwards, it'll block the current and it will protect the downstream circuits from being fried from accidental reverse battery. Um, so due to coin cells having very high internal resistance to them, they can't deliver much current. So there's these big bulk capacitors on the side here, uh, C13 and C14, which helps smooth out the current or smooth out the voltage under high current conditions to help the battery. Uh, the breadboard breakouts, so that way you can actually plug this into a breadboard and use it with like all your other electronics projects are on the sides here. Okay. Um, the Arduino or, well, in this case, the microcontroller specifically, U3. It's at the center here underneath the push button. 
Uh, it is a, effectively a smaller version of an Arduino Uno with less flash space at only 8 kilobytes. This was very tough to work around for the demo code, and a lot of features had to be cut. I'm sorry. Um, there's still some optimizations to be had because I am not, I'm not still a novice intermediate programmer. I'm a hardware engineer, not a programmer. Hardware, not software. Exactly. Um, so, uh, pain. Pain. Um, S1 is the push button, so that combined with R12, C11, and then an internal pull-up resistor on the uh, Arduino um, create a debounce circuit. So because when you press a mechanical push, push button, sorry, there's some chattering. So it may not be like 100% high or 100% low. It may like, oh, I'm high. Oh, I'm coming back down a little bit. Oh, I'm back high again. Oh, I'm coming back down a bit. And oh, okay, now I'm actually stable or vice versa. So those circuits effectively smooth it out. So it's instead of doing this weird chattering bit, it's more of smooth transition to high or smooth transition to low. So you don't have to worry about debouncing the software. I still do it in software. Uh, you, <laughs> generally, you want to do both. It's good practice to do both. Um, OK, so there's some other smaller details that I'll get into later. Um, OK, so if you haven't powered it up, go ahead and power it up. Um, the, the demo code itself is supposed to be a smorgasbord of what you can do with this guy, and I invite you all to take it, run with it, write your own cool stuff with it. Um, so upon power up, here's kind of the list of actions it does. It um, blinks the multi-vibrator on for a few seconds. It cycles the LEDs from white to red to green, then to blue. Then it turns off the RGB LEDs, and then it scans for both the NFC chip and the ma uh, magnetometer chip. If it sees both, it'll be, um, sorry, it'll be green and then blue. If it sees neither, it'll be red, red on the RGB LED. Uh, after that's done, it will load whatever user configuration you have on the NFC chip for programming. Uh, and then it will cycle the LED ring. Uh, the, then the microcontroller turns off uh, everything, all the LEDs, and enters mode one. Uh -oh. okay. There we go. So that's the boot up animation. It detected both. Does the ring animation. And it enters mode one. But my battery is lead. Um, okay. So here's the list of the modes. Uh, long press inter, uh, increments between to the next mode. It'll be three blinks on the LED ring to show you which mode you're going into. Uh, mode zero, it's just the LED multi-vibrator mode. Short press toggles that. Um, mode one toggles the uh, RGB LED from solid blue to, or blue to green to red. Mode two is solid white LED or one hertz blink or an SOS Morse pattern. Uh, mode three is ring demo, so it's either a fast spinner clock, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, a persistence of vision, like solid green ring, or a binary counter. Mode four is the compass um, demo, so if it was calibrated, it would show you on the LED ring, oh, you're, you know, what direction you're pointing on. Yeah. Uh, mode 5 is a custom profile defined by what you put into the NFC, so you can program in a short little sequence, say, I want the LED to be this color, or I want it to show this pattern or whatnot, and you can add that later. Uh, mode 6 is random mode, so it just randomly blinks the LEDs, and mode 7 is everything off. Uh, it goes into sleep mode and saves power. Um, so that's how you read the NFC and write to it uh, with NFC tools on your app, on your phone. Um, that'll show later. Uh, oh, Lord. Okay. So I'm going to kind of skip ahead some. The This is kind of the abridged list of how uh, I go about going from concept to implementation. Uh, process one is write a spec sheet. What do you want to do? How do you want to do it? What's your limits? What's your constraints? Uh, 
Step two, research, find parts, simulate, prototype, kind of iterate on your idea. Step three, simulate. Again, this is the simulator I used, LT Spice, for this guy. Um, again, prototype on a solderless breadboard, so that way you know it works in the real. Um, draw up your schematic in whatever so schematic software you can use. I use KiCad, and I recommend KiCad. Um, and then once you've drawn up your schematic, you move the board layout, which is how you physically design and place your components on there. I also use KiCad here, I recommend it. Um, you define your board size, where you want stuff placed, and all that good jazz. Uh, number five, verify your board. So when you go to a board house to get it built, um, they have design rules that you have to follow to make sure it's actually buildable. If it all checks out, you're good to go. Okay, uh, then you order your bare boards from wherever you uh, want to buy them from. I got them through PCBWay. I got them assembled through PCBWay. I recommend PCBWay. I am not sponsored. I paid my money for that. Uh, once you've ordered your components, you can assemble your boards, and once you've got your boards back. So for WA 2019, I built, um, made them, assembled them by hand. I don't recommend that. It's tedious. <laughs> I paid PCB way to do it this time around. Yes. Saves your sanity. I recommend doing that. Once you got them assembled, you can test program them. So here's all the batches of them. I wrote up the code, I tested it, and I probed it with my multimeter saying, okay, this actually you know, measures good. It's, it's known as a uh, bring up plan. All right, if everything works, success. Your boards now work. You can do with them as you please. You can sell them. You can give them away. Or you can just post them on Twitter and say, look at this cool thing I made, and people will, will applaud you. <laughs> do that. Do that. It gives people a good uh, warm feelings. Uh, here's a list of recommended free software for schematics, simulators, other good bits of software. Here's a list of recommended readings. <laughs> I'll give you all this in the slides. I've got PDFs, Yarhar Fiddle DD, if you want PDFs. <laughs> um, here's some recommended further resources. Hackaday, MIT Open Courseware. If you want to learn electrical engineering without going to university, but you, uh, you can look up MIT Open Courseware. They have a full electrical engineering course and all the details you could ever want. Free, free, no strings attached. Um, Adafruit, SparkFun, AllAboutCircuits.com, YouTubers, Electroboom, EEV Blog. Especially recommend EEV, EEV Blog. Great Scott, Lewis Rossman, Matt Sarnoff, Applied Science, Afrotech Mods, Jerry Ellsworth's, Mike, Mike's Electric Stuff, BigClive.com. Uh, wow, I can't believe I'm still recommending Reddit. <laughs> Some of these were recycled slides from 2019. I should probably scrub that out. Um, starter kits. You can buy starter kits out there. Um, here's just a list of components that I recommend. EEV blog, he's got a full list for a $300 electronics lab. That's like the bare minimums. Um, I fix it. Oh, yeah. Get I fix it kits. I'm not sponsored either. Those are useful. Um, oh, wow. I really sped through things. Okay. Contact info. Here's all my contact info if you want to learn more. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah, I can give you more details later. Um, here's the GitHub link uh, to all the files, the presentation slides, the, sor the source code, photos, all my... All my uh, schematic calculations, spreadsheets, and all that good stuff, it's all up there. I'll give you a link for it, or I can give you the slides. Okay, um, any questions so far? Perhaps a remark. Yeah. Your thing said scientific calculator. I still carry one of these with me. Yeah. It can do literally everything. Yeah. 
for a scientific calculator, I would recommend this one. Casio FX 115ES Plus. It can do derivatives. It can do integrals. It's literally a twenty dollar calculator. Okay. So, um, y'all can take. Were there any other questions? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, for those of us that kind of want to lose your sheet, is that a question for you to email us for the side stuff? Yeah, so if y'all haven't already signed up on the Google Forms, you can come up here and sign up on this sheet with your email, and I will email you all this stuff and more. Um, yeah. What? So, these are not fully populated. But these are just the bare boards. So if you if you want one, these are just the bare boards. I'm going to leave them out. Y'all can keep the multimeters because those are free. The multimeters are free. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I need one. Can I take one? I did have a quick question. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh God, How much is your VOM for getting it assembled from PCB? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mean, uh, I didn't say right really now. I didn't know. I didn't know you could get fab uh, and PNB done from from PCB. You can. It's so. Oh, I'm bleeding. The um, the cost is a fair bit to do low turn production. Yeah. I don't remember the numbers off, my, off the top yeah, of my head. It's, it's, it's a couple hundred. For a board? Oh, well, for not, not for a board, for, your, for, your for a run. Because runs. the thing is, is like to assemble each board like as a unit cost, yeah. it's only a few bucks. Yeah, the real have, cost is... The tooling and stuff. Exactly. All the tooling that takes a lot of setup. Yeah. That costs a lot. Yeah, because they have to set your production run. Exactly. But it's only a short production run, so... Yeah. Exactly. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Um, so that's how much cost. Also, the chip shortage didn't yes, help. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Ask I follow. I follow retro stuff. That's mostly all the electrical yeah, stuff I do. Silly. Everything's yeah. insane. It. There are I, I things that are 10x MSRP. So oh, I hate yeah, it. It's pretty crazy yeah. right now. By the way, whenever you're done, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. start setting up the next one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. May I get one of those as yeah, well yeah, for yeah, my friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love your sense, Thank you. I was gonna ask you. Your email and the schematics and everything, right? Yeah. Make sure your email is there on the Google Forms. Cool. Great comment for the future. Almost trivial. Don't use white on green. Yeah. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. I have my. You're gonna be mob right now. Yes. Yeah. Actually, so mine, the switch broke on the top, oh, so I have to jump into the game. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, so, Adafruit, has got some tutorials on there for um, servo movements. That's really more, that's more of a mechanical yeah. issue, just making sure things fit, you can get wire management. I'm going to invest in a 3D printer and get all that stuff to see how I can go with that. I'm going to do all my research because I really want to get into it. I'm going hard on this okay. project. Plus, I have other parts yeah. on the Cool. So, um, will they be listed on? On the slides too, slides that I can look at. Yes, yeah, they'll they'll all be listed on the slides. Okay, thank you so much. You have no yeah. idea how much this is gonna help me. You have no idea. So, thank y'all. What projector? Projector. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Uh, who else had questions? That's. There's one more. Or that that's that's yours. Hold on. Well, it's really good. Go play it. Don't ask Go play it. I will not tell you a single thing. Play it live and you will feel things. I, I looked at this game thing and I'm like, so I used to play Gary Fox Space Metal back in the day. And yeah. I loved it. And then I've been trying to find something to fill that hole ever since. And Space Engineers doesn't. And Perion doesn't. It's not a building game. It's like a puzzle game. Yeah. It's an exploration game that has like one of the best stories and ways of storytelling so, like, I've ever what played. No Man's Sky should have been. No. Uh, no. Uh, it's just, uh, no. Okay, so I've got a quick question about NFC. Yes. Uh, when I was actually down there at the D-Linton, I actually bought one of these. This is it. It's the, they, tell me, they, they tell me about all about, all about the app and all that stuff, but they, but they told me one important thing not to do. Do not delete it. Um, yeah. What do you mean by that? Uh, you can blank them. You can actually blank them and brick them if you're not careful. 
What is it? Uh, Good question. Uh, the board. Yes. Where did you get them? Uh, I got them produced through PCB Way. PCB Way. Got yeah, I'm assuming they were passed on my phone. Yes. Would, so if I were to get into those exact schematics, could they remake them? So yeah, is, yeah. I, I put the the the, the board file Gerber's the, they're all up there. Oh wait, I was trying to check what you're doing. Lauren, Lauren. Yeah. Cool. Well, now I know. Cool. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, nice. Yeah. Now I'm a nuclear engineer, so I like this kind of stuff. So. I, I, but, I cool. I was just wondering. Um, and then I might have to try to hit you a player because I have no idea what the website is or how to do that. Yeah. Just. Uh, I have some progress what photos of how to do it. Um. Mm -hmm. Just email me and I can kind of navigate you through it. Yeah. Cool.